guys, this is Julian of Julian Gray Media. Today's video is going to be a little bit interesting. It is a topic that seems very contradictory of everything you've ever learned about music mixing and mastering. A lot of you engineers watching this video, if you are watching this video, or mixers or masterers for that matter, will probably be face palming throughout this video because we're breaking so many rules here. So the idea of this video was brought upon by a tweet that my friend No Mana posted the other day. You can see it on the screen right now. This is actually not the first time I've heard of this technique. The first time is actually from a good friend of mine, Seth Munson. He's a mixer with some incredible credits. You should go check out both of their accounts. Their Twitter handles will be in the description of this video. I think Seth originally brought this up to me about five years ago telling me about the built-in limiting or clipping or something along those lines. I don't want to quote him directly, but the built-in essentially clipping limiting function of your DAW and utilizing it instead of a commercial limiter for getting a loud and transparent master. So No Man's tweet just reminded me of this idea and I, I've always wanted to give it a go for myself. So. We're gonna try it in this video. If you enjoy this video, consider supporting me on Patreon for exclusive perks, including project file downloads, tools for your creative process, early access to videos, and more. Click on the card in the upper right-hand corner for more information. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with this theory or experimental idea for that matter, the concept is, you know, whenever you have audio in any sort of digital audio program, you can clip your master, you can redline that line, but when it's bounced out and when you sum it down to a stereo wave file, it has to deal with the audio going above the zero threshold somehow. You, you can't export that clipped audio. It has to sum it down to, you know, one big fat wave file that caps out at that zero threshold. You can't export that clipped data. As far as I know, I am not a software engineer. I'm just giving you the best understanding that I have of the idea. So. In so saying this, there has to be a built-in limiter, clipper, soft clipper, or some sort of algorithm that's pulling that audio out and reducing it down to that zero line, the line of clipping. The theory is that if you clip that limiter in the same way that you would push a off-the-shelf conventional mastering limiter, maybe you can get a cleaner result by just chopping off the top of your audio getting a big fat waveform that's clipped on the master channel rather than using something like FabFilter Pro-L or Elevate from Newfangled. We're gonna try this technique at a few different volume levels so we can see what it does, how destructive it can be, and actually if it sounds good at the end of the day. This might be game changing if it actually sounds good and it's gonna break a lot of the rules that we're accustomed to as music enthusiasts. We're gonna try out a bunch of different limiting methods. We're gonna use Pro-L, we're gonna use Elevate from Newfangled, and we're gonna use Ozone. Of course, we're gonna use the Ableton stock limiter, and then of course, we're going to clip the master on Ableton and see what actually deems us the best results. Let's jump into Ableton and get started. All right, so now as you can see, we are in Ableton Live here. This is the project file for my latest release, which is a remix for the Private Language's brand new song, Afterglow. Private Language is made up of two members, Blake Lewis, who you might recognize from American Idol Season 5, the beatbox guy, and my good friend KJ Saka from Pendulum, Destroyed, a ton of other bands, one of the best EDM drummers in the world, needs no introduction. So this is my remix of their newest song, Afterglow. We're using it as a baseline for this test. Essentially, as you can see on the master here, we have FabFilter Pro L2, Newfangled Audio Elevate, Ozone 9 Maximizer from Isotope, the built-in Ableton Limiter, and then of course our clip over the master. I'm gonna show you the settings I use for each of these quickly so you can get an idea and know that I'm not influencing it too much. Obviously there's nuance between each of these limiters or mastering devices, but I've done my best to try to match each of them. All of them are getting a feed of plus three gain um, at the start and are set at negative 0.1 on the output. Each of these have that exact same setup to, you know, in theory, avoid the stock limiter as much as possible. As you can see in Elevate, we're doing plus three decibels here, and our output is set to negative 0.1. I have clipping turned off just to, to avoid any sort of um, coloration there. We have Ozone Maximizer 9, and again, we're at negative 0.1. We're feeding it positive three decibels. The limiter is set up in a very similar way, negative 0.10, and plus three decibels of gain. 
And then of course our master utility is just pushing three decibels of gain over the actual master. So we can take a look at how all these look. I mean, if we, if we enable Pro L2, you see we're doing about negative two, negative two and a half gain reduction on this. You know, negative two, two and a half, basically getting the same output level. And then of course we can view our insane plan, our technique for this video by enabling this utility here. Let's see what this looks like. So even at three decibels of gain boost, we're already well over the line here. Already two decibels over, which is a big no-no for me usually, but let's see if this video changes my perspective on that. We're actually gonna do two tests today. We're gonna do the plus three, as you can see here, but we're also gonna try plus six and bounce out everything with three more additional decibels of gain and see if that pushes these limiters to the test. I think it will, and it'll really show the coloration of each limiter by really making them work to pull those transients down. I'm gonna go ahead and bounce out all of these different versions, and then we can carry on the video from there. All right, so I have gone ahead and bounced out every one of the versions, the Pro-L, Maximizer, Elevate, built-in Ableton stock limiter, and then the built-in clipper master clipped thing and we're about to compare them let's go ahead and check it out to start things off we're going to do pro l i think this is like the edm standard a lot of people use this and we're going to see how it fared in our limiting test so this is a pretty subtle master it's not the most the most gain reduction ever uh, but it is still a fair amount you can see some pretty big sausaging here let's go ahead and play it for you All right, so that's that's sounding pretty good, pretty beefy. Let's check out Maximizer. Okay, next up will be Elevate. So far, they're pretty comparable, all of them. Let's go ahead and check out the built-in stock limiter first, and then we'll check out the clipper. Okay, so I hear a little bit of destruction on some of those bigger transients, and it's not quite as loud as Pro-L or Maximizer but it still sounds good. So finally, of course, we're gonna try the clipping, clipping the master method. Let's see how this sounds. All right, so that's performing surprisingly better than I thought. Uh, it sounds really good, actually. What I'll do now is I'll create a, a cycle through all of these. So on every four beats or something, I'll switch to another version. You can tell me what you think and which version is your favorite. All right, here we go. Okay, let me know what you think down in the comment section of the plus three version. Let's go ahead and check out the plus six version. This version I'm expecting to be a little bit more telling. I think that the way that these limiters deal with clipping and limiting are very different. So we should hear more of a sonic difference between all of them. Obviously this test is not scientific. There's no 
way to make the limiters exactly the same. They all have very different parameters. Some of them have a variable threshold. Some of them don't. Some of them have different way of handling attack and release time. I did my best to make them comparable and this is how it's going to sound. I think the plus six is going to be much more telling of each of the limiters color. This is Fat Filter Pro L2. Um, let's go ahead and give it a spin. <laughs> All right, so that's crushing quite a bit. Very much a sausage here. I think most of them are, but we're gonna carry on. Yeah, so next up is Isotope Ozone 9's Maximizer. Again, plus six decibels, let's check this out. I think that six might be a little too much. We're hitting a little too much compression, but um, for the sake of this uh, comparison, I think it's it's a good way to really test these limiters and see how they do and handle with this, this much uh, gain reduction. Here's Elevate. So I can hear some pretty noticeable distortion on all of these. I'm very curious to see if the, the built-in clipper is as clean as No Mana claims it is. We'll check that right after we check out the Ableton stock limiter. I'm expecting this to get completely obliterated. Yeah, there's some pretty noticeable compression artifacts in there. That's getting pretty distorted and destroyed by the Ableton stock limiter. Now, if you're on a budget and you don't have any limiters, maybe, just maybe, the built-in clipping the master method is better than the stock limiter. Let's go ahead and see. This is the moment you've all been waiting for. Pushing plus six on the master. Redlining. Redlining a lot, to be fair. Let's see how this thing turns out. I hear some crunch in a few certain spots, but man, does that sound better than the Ableton stock limiter? Um, I don't know if I like it more than like a Pro L, but we're gonna do a cycle comparison like we did for the three decibel boost and see if this actually stacks up because to me, that sounds a lot better than the built-in Ableton limiter. This might actually be viable for somebody who's not, let's just say, can't afford these expensive off-the-shelf limiters. I don't know if I feel comfortable advising people to clip their master six decibels, but based on this test here, it doesn't seem like that bad of an idea. Maybe he's onto something. Let's go ahead and check out a cycle of all of them so you can hear them back to back to back without any gaps, and you can tell me what you think is the best option. Here we go.
to think about this, this really changes my perspective on a lot of things. Yeah, it, it to me, based on that comparison, clipping your master plus six, and, and for like reference, here's what it actually looks like on your master channel when you're clipping this loud. This is something that's always been like a huge no to me, like a huge, like you have to fix that immediately. But now that I've seen this and I've heard it, um, I don't know. It sounds pretty comparable to like a Pro L, if not a little bit louder and a little bit clearer. I don't know if I could advise doing this. It feels like so wrong of me as a music teacher to tell you to clip your master. But I think that maybe in the digital audio realm, and we'd have to try this in other DAWs as well, it's not such a bad idea. I mean, if you compare you know, the same volume input into the Ableton stock limiter, and you compare it to plus six on the master and letting the master basically chop off the top of the waveform, the latter sounds better to me. The built-in limiter does not stack up at all against any of the, you know, the off the shelf, high budget options like Pro-L, Maximizer, Elevate, but it really, it really pales in the comparison to just boosting the volume on the master channel. Really, really weird. I did not expect this to work as well as it did. I encourage you to try this yourself with your own music and with your own mastering settings. Obviously, mastering is a very subjective thing. The settings in these limiters might influence the color and the sound. And, you know, if you use Pro-L in certain ways, it could sound better for a song than Elevate or the other way around. Or I'm sure pushing your master channel volume to plus six is not the best option for every track. But based on this, I mean, I wouldn't rule it out. And that's something I never thought I would say. So that was a weird and unexpected end to this video. If you wanna check out the raw wave file of that cycle, you can check it out on Patreon right now. The link will be in the description below so you can hear it in lossless format. I'm really amazed by this, guys. Uh, let me know what you think in the comment section below. If you liked the video, give it a like. If you didn't, give it a dislike. Don't give me a dislike if you don't like this tech. I kind of feel weird about perpetuating it. It goes against everything in my belief system, but for some reason it works and that can't be, you know, undermined. You have to acknowledge that, you know, it's, it doesn't sound bad, which is uh, really, really peculiar. So anyway, guys, let me know what you think in the comment section below if you're gonna use this yourself or let me know what mastering limiter you prefer to use and the settings that you use for your master limiter. Let me know if I've done something horribly wrong to throw off this test entirely. I'd love to know in the comment section as well. Make sure to subscribe for future videos. I make these videos pretty often. And I'll see you guys in the next video. See you guys later. Bye-bye.